Okay, a question came up. Uh, an individual was wanting to know whether Bobcat would be suitable for their purpose, which uh, involved from their description using uh, multiple import and manipulation of .stl files, uh, stereolithography files, to build up a, uh, a heraldic plaque with some embossed uh, symbols on it, all, all done from uh, adding and manipulating and layering uh, .stl files. So we'll start off by knocking out a, a quick and dirty heraldic shield looking thing. Um, I'd already paste this out. We'll start with a, a foot square piece. So I'm going to quickly make a, a rectangle and we'll use a uh, line parallel function to quickly knock out parallel line there. There. And make a couple of uh, of uh, points on this thing. Make one there, make one there, and make one there. Now I can get rid of parts of this. Get rid of the uh, rectangle. And what I'm going to do is just just real quickly bang this thing out. It's uh, I'm not planning on making the world's nicest looking plaque here. Uh, as you'll see, it's not going to be. Uh, we'll drop a little scallop there. Use a uh, spline function to knock out a. Uh, And I can adjust that with the uh, deform tool to be a little bit closer to what I want. All right. And now we'll mirror that around this line. And now I can get rid of that line and the three points. Okay, and quickly make sure this is all, yeah, it's all selecting together. All right, and one last thing is I've now got this thing occupying all of the, uh, the 12 inch by 12 inch square. I'm gonna shrink it down just a little bit. Better select it. There. Now, we'll go into Bob Art, and the first thing we do pretty much always is to define our stock. So I'm going to define that 12 by 12 plane, give it a working resolution of 150, and give it a dark gray color just because I don't like staring at loud colors all the time. And I will use drag to more or less there. More or less center this thing up. So there we go. Alright, now we can make our plaque. And this uh, generally you're not going to want to to uh, bother with using a, a, a fancy 3D file to do plaques. You can make them in any shape. You see how quickly I rough that outline? Dig how quickly I can turn that into a plaque. Go to emboss regular. Uh, I'm going to pick a uh, again a fairly neutral color. We'll say uh, grayish blue. Um, we'll make it a quarter inch tall. Additive. Okay. I'll select my geometry. Click reselect. Hold down the shift key to select the entire contour. Well, not contour, but uh, the entire geometry. Hit the space bar. Click OK. And now I can. Regenerate. Hmm. Eh? Why didn't I do that? Select. Hmm. What did I miss? I missed something. 
quite obviously. So let's look at. I've got an add. I've got a color. I've got a radius. I do want just an additive emboss. There we go. Somehow or another I got out of phase with the selection. And this is the kind of thing you have to learn. The, the learning curve is not terribly steep if you focus on one operation, watch a video like this, get the operation in your head, and then just practice it eight or ten times while watching the video. You will very quickly develop the routine to do fairly complex stuff. Uh, in this case, uh, go back to fit and get a top view. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is import some STL files and I'm going to put four, oh, I'll take two files and I'll just basically import uh, one in the lower uh, left and then the upper right and I'll take the other file and put one in the upper right and uh, or upper left and lower right. And I'll you know, rotate them, manipulate them, stretch them, that sort of thing uh, in the meantime. So the two files that I've got handy that are roughly the right size and you can scale up and down I, I actually went in ahead of time and said okay I need something about three inches by four inches and and uh, and made these things the right size ahead of time but you can you can shrink or, or uh, expand just about anything I'm going to use emboss from component uh, this is uh, a Bob Art Pro feature that will allow me to grab a, a, uh, an STL file so I do that and the first one I'm going to use is uh, this leaf 3d design here so I'll select it, and you see a uh, little selection window pop up that's got a lot of features. I'm not going to go into huge depth on all of these, but uh, I will be using quite a few of them as I go through here, so you'll get an idea of the, uh, the capacity. First, I will change it to a color that I uh, find a little bit less garish than that turquoise blue. So now I've got a nice green. I want to make it a little bit taller but leave it skinny. So the first thing I do is come over here to component size. The first thing I see is the checkbox for keep same ratio. I don't want that. I want to make it tall and skinny. In X it is 1.3 inches, in Y it is 2.1 inches. So I want to make it 3 inches in Y. That simple. Uh, now when I start to move it, which I'll do by using these uh, boxes down here, you can just enter a value or you can just hold down the uh, the uh, buttons and move it to where you want. So I'll move this over to there. And I will say OK because that's what I want. You can expand this in any one of these dimensions that you want. If you want to make it you know, tall and skinny, you just change the, uh, the Y value, the up and down on this uh, orientation value. If you want it fatter, which I'll do another one up in the other corner and make it fatter. If you want it to be a higher relief, you change the Z value, which is looking at this, it is straight toward the screen and then it's back toward the uh, the viewer. Uh, it's the actual, the height of the uh, model. But anyway, we're gonna leave this uh, where I've got it. Just say okay. I'll go up here and regenerate. What you have to do, anytime you add a feature, it wants to be told okay you know now you want me to be uh, added to the mix that's what regenerate does uh, I've got the first one on there and uh, and I haven't shown this I don't think these are not just flat they're actually embossed uh, let's see if I can get this up here it's difficult to tell with that one I'll make more some in higher relief but uh, what you've got is actually you know a plaque here with a relief on top of it so we'll go and do another one. Uh, again, I'm going to emboss from component, and I'm just going to pick the same one again. It, you can, I can pick any of these really, and uh, and well, I'll just, nah, I'll stick with my original plan. This time, I want to make it wider. Again, I drop my keep the uh, same ratio. If if you leave this checked and you make any of these uh, larger or smaller, it just scales the model with the same aspect ratio. So it. It won't, it won't get tall and skinny, it'll just get taller and proportionally wider. But unchecking it, and you're able to uh, 
take your X up to say 1.7 and leave the Y the same. And then when you go to move it, notice how, uh, just run this up side by side, you see it's about a little bit shorter, but it's quite a bit wider. Uh, there's, you know, the manipulation you can do. So I'm going to raise it up here. I'm going to run it across the page. And I'm going to rotate it, say, negative 20 around the z-axis. So there's some manipulation for you. Hit OK. I'll go up here and regenerate. And we'll have our uh, second example on the page. Now we'll get something a little bit different. Again, I go to emboss from component, and I'll pick this rose. Now, in this case, I want the rose to go in different directions at different times. So let's go with about a 45 degree around the z-axis rotation. And I'm going to just scale it down a little bit. I'm going to leave the aspect ratio the same and make that a 3.4. So now, I'll move it over. get it into a place that uh, that suits my design change it to and these colors are strictly for for the use of uh, of uh, drawing the you know, obviously it's just going to be carved out of whatever material you you want it carved out of when you put it onto your uh, router and tell it to turn it loose so there's one and we'll do one more past that and I'm gonna wait and just uh, compile them both at the same time. Do another emboss from component. Again, the rows. This time I'm going to go, say, 135. And we'll shrink it again about to 3.4. Okay. So run it over into the opposite corner. Let me give it a little bit more rotation. And we'll color that one yellow. Now you see that I've got two here that have not been compiled yet. That's what that red uh, X is all about. So I'm just going to compile these together. And it, uh, it, uh, the compilation process that's called regenerating in the program, it, the process takes longer the more complex your shape gets. But you can keep adding these until your computer bogs down, uh, which will happen you know, obviously sooner with a less powerful computer and later with a more powerful computer. What I'm running this on is a, a medium powerful two-year-old, well, two-and-a-half-year-old gaming rig. It's not state-of-the-art. I've got a, uh, what's right now, about a $120 graphics card in it. It's an old uh, dual-core AMD processor that I've got clocked at, uh, well, it's actually overclocked to 4 gigahertz. It just gives you an idea of the uh, the uh, hardware requirements. A modern system with a, uh, a, an i5 and a $200 graphics card will blow the weeds. It'll really push this program just fine. So there is your manipulation. Uh, once you've got this, getting into the cam part of it and generating tool paths to, to uh, actually cut it is a matter for another time. But you can definitely see here that Bobcad can do manipulation, stretching, deformation, folding, spindling, and mutilating of multiple STL files in one example. Well, there you go. Hope you find this helpful.